Hey guys, Footy Manager TV here. Welcome back to another Barcelona FIFA 16 career mode episode. This is number 11. And first up in this episode here, we've got a few updates. We're going to check out the youth squad, also a squad report. But here we have to make a change. Unfortunately, Sergio Busquets picks up an injury. He's a crucial part of the team. He's not like the most important player, but he definitely does uh, play a role in that defensive midfield position. So you can see we do have quite a few youth players in the youth squad already. Anyone that stands out for you, judging off their potential and overall and strengths, uh, their better attributes so far, who do you think could be worthy signing up soon? Leave your thoughts in the comments. And also, I noticed in the comments you guys have been saying to upload this more consistently. But if you've been watching my recent videos, you know that I have been sick. And also, if you can tell by my voice, I'm still not 100%. But I definitely was better uh, than I was maybe a few days ago. So, hope you guys will understand that as I get back to catching up really on my videos in terms of recording the footage. Once more, the final game you see in this episode is the last one I recorded. I'm trying to get a bit of a head uh, of where I'm at really. So I hope you guys do understand that, but don't forget to drop a like on the video if you would like to see more of this series. So uh, we do have that squad report I mentioned here. When you have a goal like Iniesta improving, that's amazing. A bit disappointed that Messi isn't going up. A lot of other players are. Neymar, his form is bad. I'm struggling to get the best out of him, and I'm not sure why. It's just he's one of those players for me that I don't do as well as I should with. It's just like Messi is doing well, scoring goals, Suarez is, but Neymar is just the weak link in the attacking three for whatever reason. Maybe he's more of a skiller to get the best out of him, but I'm not really a skiller myself, and the way Barcelona play, more passing, that's the style I want to play for the most part. I don't try and do five-star skills like every single game, which could be a tad unrealistic as well, as you don't see that every single game in real life, even though Neymar tries that. But yeah, it's a bit unrealistic, <laughs> like it's not like FIFA Street or something like that. But anyway, another one of those players improving, that's already quality, Sergio Bisquets, I already mentioned him, that's why I'm a bit disappointed he's injured. Mascherano is going up and I'm not really using him, so I suppose that would be good if we do eventually sell him, make some good money. As I've already mentioned, he's not the best centre-back in my view because of his height. Also, Alan Halilovic, he's got a big part to play in this career mode, not this season because he's out and loan, but you do know if you played career mode a lot so far this year in FIFA 16, he develops amazingly. I've seen him reach high 80s, even 90s. He could be a new Messi for us, pretty much. Just another superstar player. Not sure if he will become as good as Messi, but still, maybe a 90, 91. If he gets to that, he could play in a similar style. And when he does become a first-team player, where would you use him? Because he's a central attacking midfielder. Where would you use him in this formation? Would you use him as a central midfielder or maybe one of those inside forward positions? I'd love to see your feedback on what kind of position yeah we should kind of develop him as so here in the first half you see Neymar tries to get past I was trying to skill for a bit there trying to chuck that in but as I've mentioned as Osasuna has a chance here don't forget we're leading 2-0 on aggregate so we could cruise in this match kind of uh, not really going too attacking so making some changes here but that chance for Neymar exactly I just uh, threw in that highlight there it didn't lead to a goal but I do do skills sometimes and I got past but unfortunately Osasuna put so many behind the ball on that occasion and now they score late in the game and gives them some hope they're only one goal away now I was a bit disappointed with that. Maybe I wasn't yeah, taking this game as serious as I should. I thought we were going to uh, do well. I thought the goals were going to come. And maybe I wasn't going so attacking, trying to score. And try to avoid this, really. Uh, them scoring that goal uh, to give them some hope. That was Lewis Martin. So I did have to keep my head in the game for the final minutes. But we got to injury time. Still holding that lead on aggregate. We were going to counter there with the goalkeeper. Uh, he was up for the corner, so there's a good chance I was probably going to counter and score there. I did last time in one of my videos, I think, so <laughs> yeah, um, I probably would have. Maybe. I guess we'll never know. Doesn't really matter as we still advance 
on aggregate. It's a bit disappointing to lose that leg, but we still advance, which is the most important thing. And we're doing still well in the league, but it's going to be a fight for the title. It's not well, we're going to be leading, but who knows what's going to happen for the rest of the season. We're pushing towards January. So we do get into the round of 16. I'd like to at least reach the final in the cup. That would be a goal for us. But to me, the league... I've already mentioned for this series, my goal is to win the league in the first season, Champions League. I would love to win the Champions League as well. Uh, my goal for that is probably to get the final. It's going to be hard. It, it's hard Champions League. You're playing against the best teams in Europe, so it's really hard. But we are one of the better teams, if not the best, so there's expectations there. But I mean, for the series, I don't think it would be the end of the world if I don't win both, because then there's the challenge, but it's more than that as well. If I just wanted to win games... Uh, there wouldn't be much fun in it. But for me, it's about developing the squad. And with a big team, I think Barcelona is the best to do so. You've already seen I'm bringing in younger players with my signings and the way I've trained players that I've brought in, like Pepe Lu, he's developed really well. He's gone like plus six already this season. But in this game here in the league against Deportivo, unfortunately, nothing happened in the first half. So moving into the second half right away, they even made a change, a change themselves. They brought on Perez. Here, they're playing out of defense. Sydney, unfortunately, didn't have the best of touches. Pacao Alcacer was able to finish and he's been a good signing for us. Leave your thoughts as a signing. No doubt he's a good uh, a Spanish talent. Paco Alcacer, he, he made the interception. And you see how he slowed down just to make sure uh, he finished that. Very good finish. Only second goal in the Liga BBVA so far this season. But as you know, Luis Suarez starting most of the time. Uh, Paco, usually he'll play when Suarez is not really the best fitness. And we concede like that. Surely the goalkeeper should have grabbed that. I did all I can do. I wanted the goalkeeper to come out a little bit there, so I did that. I hold Y, of course, on the Xbox controller. But he should be getting to that, shouldn't he? Is like the def uh, I don't know if he's... That should be a free kick for the goalkeeper. He was like getting in the way of him, but maybe in real life it would have been. But why is he trying to punch it? Use both hands and grab it, mate. <laughs> That's so annoying because, yeah. If I knew he was going to do that, I wouldn't have uh, held Y, like I mentioned, uh, to try and... That's why I did it, so he can try and go out of the box and grab the ball. But yeah, um, I don't know, that's, that, that was annoying anyway. So we would have to look for another goal and bring on Messi. Again, we had to rest a couple players here, but we brought on the big guns here, Iniesta and Messi, and hopefully we can find that winning goal. But they are on the attack here. We're going to have to win this back. Come on, put the pressure on. You see, I've got a couple players uh, following the ball there, and they do win it back. That was Dani Alves, good tackle. But then Paco Alcacer, he finds Messi, and Messi brings us back into the lead once more. Lionel Messi, that's why he is the best player in the world. You can always rely on him to come up with an important goal for you. Uh, set up well once again from intercepting. I get a lot of goals from that. When we put pressure, uh, when they're in defense and we intercept the ball and we're able to create an opportunity. So we get the lead back uh, from Messi. He's going to score a lot of goals for us, like every single season, and it's what you would expect. But again, it's an error in defense. Oliver had the ball, but there was Juan Fran who slid in in the box, and that, of course, is going to be a penalty every single time, and a yellow card to go with that for Juan Fran late in the game. Obviously, they're a bit desperate because they know they needed a goal, and we were about to create opportunity, so he just went for it, I suppose. But here... Lionel Messi is going to step up. Can he finish? He goes with a cheeky chip and the goalkeeper. He didn't actually guess the right way or he didn't guess a way. He didn't go left or right, but he stayed straight. But I don't know why didn't he try and save it. Like, I guess he went, yeah, he went to one way, but it didn't really look like he did because he kind of gave up when he knew just yeah, going straight down the middle. So that's the thing with Leo Messi. Sometimes I'm even scared to go uh, with those chip penalties because the goal, I'm scared if the goalkeeper stays straight and he saves it, it's really embarrassing. It really looks bad. And you probably would say, yeah, you should have just smashed it to one side. But uh, Leo Messi is really composed and kind of can fool the goalkeeper with his body language. And that's, you got to have your faith in Leo Messi in, in those kind of penalty uh, situations. So we've got 
the end of the episode now, pretty much. Only two games in this episode. Um, as I mentioned, need to catch up on recording my games, which I should be able to do from now, both in this and my lead series. I should be able to start to play FIFA again. Haven't played it too much in the last week, obviously, for reasons I mentioned. So we had to make a change there to bring Busquets back into the team as he's recovered from his injury. It wasn't a long-term injury. And so the first game of the next episode is going to be against Shakhtar, which is really important, actually, because we still have opportunity to finish first in the group. You don't know what Roma is going to do. They could draw. They could lose. Who knows what is going to happen. So Papaleu, you know I do have him on three drills. I was going to put Neymar back in to round off this episode. I thought about it for a little bit. Neymar, he already has 88 finishing, which is a high attribute. So I thought, what's going to improve Neymar? He's not scoring goals, but he's already got like 88 finishing. So I thought he should be, he'll work that out. He'll start scoring eventually. So I thought maybe he's passing. That's where he's let down. Obviously, it's not terrible attributes. They're just in the high. 70s but I'd like to get them into the 80s and he could become maybe a well-rounded player a bit more than he is add something extra to his game so we'll see how he goes over the next month or two uh, with that kind of training but for now that is going to be it if you would like to see more Barcelona Fever 16 career mode episodes don't forget to drop a like on the video and I'll see you guys in the very next one